Hi guys, it's Kelly Latavola here and I'm back with another video for Neat and Tangled. Today I'm going to be using a couple of different stamp sets to create a scene. So this scene is actually for my dad's birthday. Um, and then I wanted to use the mountain set as well. I thought that would be super cool to put in the background with the um, goat, like a little mountain goat. So this is just some eclipse masking paper. I'm going to use this um, to create the hills in the background. So I just put that over completely covering my entire um, card panel and then I use my ruler to draw that straight line which is going to be like the back of the field. I don't even know necessarily if that was, I don't even know if I needed it, but it was the way that I did it. Um, I don't know if I would, given the choice, if I would do it again that way. But anywho, I wanted a couple of little layers of hills so I just freehanded those in, made sure I had enough room for my mountains in the background and then I'm going to um, just trim these out. So I did use my paper trimmer for that straight line one and then the other two I'm just going to do by hand. They don't have to be perfect. We're just making some hills. The, the stamps are going to be the focal point. Um, so don't stress about it too much. But save all your pieces. You need all four of your pieces parts in order to make this work. So I'm going to put them onto my card base um, exactly the way that they were before and then I'm going to use a pencil to lightly draw a line so that way as I am putting them on and removing them I still know where they line up at so each time I'm lining them up then drawing that line as a guide for later on and then moving on to the next mask so like I said um, this card I actually made this card ooh, quite some time ago because uh, it was for my dad's birthday and I typically don't make masculine cards um, and so sometimes, don't judge me, I know, sometimes I buy them <laughs> because I don't usually make a lot of them. So anywho, back here. So this, we're going to talk a little bit about perspective. So the tractor is smaller, the barn is smaller, that's why I wanted the layers of hills. So that way, I'm putting my little farmer and my goat up front so they're regular sized and then the barn and the tractor in the background on these other hills so that it looks like they are the correct size for the scene but they're set further back. I'm also going to need masks for all of these so that's what I'm putting um, down there. I did cut a mask for the goat as well uh, but I couldn't stamp them both at the same time just because of how they were positioned. So once that was done, um, I'm going to put the mask on the tractor because I have to stamp the mountains, but the other stuff will be um, covered up by masking paper. I'm not worried about completely covering it because the mountain's not going to come down that far. So I just picked a couple of different blue colors to stamp my mountains in, but you could do grays, you could do purples. I mean, those are all, I think, pretty within the normal range for um uh, you know, a mountain, I said range, huh, for a mountain range. Um, but anywho, so this is the, what is the, sea, sea Breeze, I think, is um, the color that I'm using here. This is from W plus 9, and it's going to be my layer that's furthest away. Um, so I'm going to stamp that down. I did have to stand up to make sure that I got really good pressure because it is a larger stamp. And then I'm going to move on to the next one which is a little bit of a darker blue, more in like the medium shade. This is falling for blue. Um, and like I said, I just picked the ones that I, you know, I thought they would look nice together would be traditional, you know, mountain colors. You can see that there is some gapping where the, um, the masking paper is. I'm not worried about it. I'm going to be able to um, fix that with a Copic marker. So the last one is uh, Nautical Navy. That's the darkest one. I did feel like the color in the back was a little bit too light for the other colors that I picked. So I'm just going to go in and stamp that a second time just to kind of build up that color and make it a little bit darker. Um, so just keep that in mind if you're ever, you know, doing some stamp layering and you think maybe it should be a little bit darker, don't worry about it. You can always restamp it, especially if you have a um, stamp positioner tool like a Misty or, you know, what have you. Here I'm going in with my Copic markers um, to make it even still just a little bit darker 
Uh, and then I'm going to fix that gapping issue, you know, the issue that I had with the gapping. So everything, all the color goes right up against all of the images. Um, I just picked some colors that matched the um, ink pretty well. From there, I'm going to put all of the masks on for my little scene here. Um, and then you'll see how we do. If you've watched my videos before, you've probably seen me do this. Um, so all those masks are on. I'm going to put these masks in place. So I'm going to mask that mountain range we just did. And the reason I'm putting them all back on is so that they're all lined up. Um, and I don't have to worry about it looking weird. Here are the colors that I picked for my background um, in Distress Inks. And so I'm going to remove the first layer and I'm going to go in with my lightest color. I want the part that's closest to the mountain range to be the lightest. So I'm going to add all my shading coming up from the bottom. So I'm going to fill it in with the Twisted Citron add some shading with the um, mode lawn and then some further shading with the lucky clover and then I'm going to put this mask back in place. I'm going to be honest with you sometimes it's a little bit challenging to get them to stick again uh, because there's so much moisture on the paper distress inks are made to stay wet longer um, so sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to get them to stick, but they will um, eventually. So here I wanted to make sure I didn't take my little farmer mask with me, right? Um, but then when I checked the, like where it lined up, where the lines matched, it wasn't really super matchy matchy. Uh, so in order to fix that, I just picked the other one up and put it back down. And then I'm just going to do the same thing um, that I did with the last one. So lightest color, mid-tone, darkest color. Um, the only time that this is going to be different is the last time. And the reason that it is, is because I didn't want them just standing. I know I felt like there should be like a road or a street or a, or a path or a something. I, I, I don't know. I, that's just the idea that I had in my head. So I went with it. So this time the green is actually going to be coming from the top side and um, where it kind of is going to fade off into the brown of the road, pathway, walkway, whatever. You know what I'm saying. And so for that, I'm using um, antique linen. And I'm just going to blend that up into the green. And then for my shading um, there to make it a little bit darker, I'm going to be using vintage photo. Um, so that they all blend into each other. And I always do my distress inking twice. This is a very, very long video. Don't worry, there's going to be a story. I don't know how else we would make it through a 30 minute video. Um, and then once all that's done, I can remove the um, masks. You can kind of see the full scene come together um, and then remove also these little teeny tiny masks. Then obviously we're going to get into the coloring because I cannot just leave them white. I mean, I probably could, but I won't. Um, so removing those and then there are some details that I'm still going to add into the background but first I'm going to erase my pencil lines where my stamp images are. Distress inks like all the rubbing of the ink on there the blending that you're doing typically gets rid of the pencil lines um, but I wanted to make sure that I didn't have any that were still left on there when I started in the Copa coloring because it will trap it. You won't be able to erase the pencil lines once you put an alcohol marker on top of it. So here, just squaring up all of my um, green around those little masks, and then I'm going to do some grasses. The further away the hill is, the less detail you would see. It would really look more just like a solid green. The closer that they get to you, you would see more um, texture in the grass. So I didn't really do anything to the back hill. I did add some texture to the front hill and then the area that they're actually standing on. And I did this the same way that I do everything, lightest to darkest and then darkest back to lightest. Um, the only thing that I did do on that second hill I didn't do on the first, like landing area, um, is I went over the entire thing with my lightest color to just kind of blend it and make the um, grasses a little less sharp, um, just a little less detailed. So anywho, I did tell you that this card is for my dad's birthday. Um, and typically I don't, um, I don't make them. 
this one I did because in that goat set, there's one that says, like, happy birthday, you old goat. And I thought it was hysterical, okay? I know it's like a dad joke. I don't even care. I thought it was so funny. Um, and I thought my dad would get a kick out of it. So that's how I started this. Um, I decided I was going to co color my little farmer to look like Peanut. And then this would be mine and Peanut's card to my dad for his birthday. Um, so, speaking of birthdays, my family... Um, my brother-in-law, Jonathan, uh, his birthday is just a couple of days before mine. Uh, and then my dad's is a week, like a week to the day, uh, after mine. So we typically, when we get together as a family, because everybody's schedules are super busy, um, we celebrate our birthdays all at one time. Um, and that is what we did this year. But if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I celebrated my actual birthday, a little bit differently this year. So, um, I know you all have been waiting. I know you all have been waiting for it. I have not. I'm not purposely holding out on you. It's just been kind of crazy the last couple of weeks. Um, so when my birthday came around, it actually fell on a Saturday this year. It isn't like I don't know. I didn't turn forty. It wasn't an, an uh, you know, a super big. I turned thirty six. Just like a regular, you know, regular birthday. Though I did see a meme one time that said that they were. They're going to stop. I'm not going to refer to my birthday as an age anymore. I'm going to start referring to it as levels because levels so sound much cooler. So like I'm on level 36. It does sound cooler. Let's be honest. You try it. Tell me what you think. Um, so anyway, um, Eric had told me that he needed me from the time I dropped off Peanut to his dad, which was at noon on Saturday, um, until the following day the afternoon of the following day. That's what he told me. He needed one, like, 24-hour period. Um, and I was like, what has he got going on here? Like, what would we be doing for 24 hours? So, uh, I drop off Peanut. I come back home. I realize that I have forgotten about a card that was due. This is a real, real-life thing. Um, and it happens to me a lot, even though I really, really try to keep them straight in my Google Calendar. But anyway, so I was, like, rushing to, fi to finish that. Um... And he told me that I could, um, that we wouldn't have time to come back home in between dinner, that I was going to, before dinner, I was going to need to pack clothes uh, to change at his apartment. That I didn't need to get ready. I didn't need to do my hair or my makeup. Um, just like my regular comfy clothes uh, for the first part of the day. But I did need to pack stuff to get ready for dinner that night. And I'm like, okay. So all of this is just like this gigantic mystery to me. And so I did, I'm like, thankfully, he didn't need me to get ready for anything because now that I've forgotten this card, there's 0% chance that I have time to get ready for anything. And I didn't. Um, pretty much, I put my hair in a ponytail and brushed my teeth. That was the extent of my, quote unquote, getting ready. So while we're on the way to destination one, which I have no idea what it is, we were um, talking in the, in the truck and I was doing, what was I doing? I was doing something on Instagram. I don't remember what. And he was like, can I have your phone? I was like, I'm sorry. And he was like, yeah, I want, I want your phone. And I was like, well, you can't have my phone all day, bro. Like, but not that, I mean, I don't need it to breathe, but like, what if something happens to Peanut or like my mom needs to get a hold of me? And he was like, okay, why don't you let me log into your Instagram on my phone? And I'm like, what? Why would I do that? And he was like, that way, everybody else will know what's going on while you still don't know what's going on. And I'm like, oh, okay. And, but then he told me, he's like, you can keep your phone, but you can't check on Facebook. Because like my, um, when I post on Instagram, it auto uh, posts to my blog on Facebook. Um, so for those of you who don't have Instagram and do have Facebook, that's an option, by the way, to stay in the loop. Um, so I log into my Instagram on his phone. I log out of it on my phone. And um, then we're, we're on our way. So the first destination that we get to is actually um, a massage place. And I'm like super sweet. We had been talking about getting couples massages. So I am very excited about that. He walks in. We're talking to the lady or whatever. And he was like, okay, I'll be back in an hour and a half. And I was like, wait, you're le but you're leaving? Where, wait, what? And he was like, yeah, I got other stuff I got to do. Um, this is just for you. And I was like, oh, okay. So I got an hour and a half long massage, which was amazing. 
and then like I come out and I'm all you know sleepy and what have you and um he was like okay we're gonna have to get something to eat because it's going to be a while till we get dinner so he actually brought me Dunkin you know stole my heart with the Dunkin Donuts brought me Dunkin Donuts and a bagel so we ate in the parking lot of the massage place and then we're on to um destination number two which again I still had no idea what it was so he's like stop asking questions you have all these questions and I was like I'm naturally curious you can't blame me um so we get to this shopping plaza and it's got all these different shops in it and stuff and um I was like what are we here for and he goes this is part of the reason why I love him because he has such a funny sense of humor um he goes this was the Taco Bell with the highest Yelp review in the area um and I figured that you would probably want to stop by it and I was like I don't even really like Taco Bell <laughs> Um, but it was actually a nail place. Um, so there was a nail place in the shopping plaza, which I had never been to. And so we walk in and he was like, she has an appointment for a manicure and a pedicure. Um, and then he was like, okay, give me a kiss. Like, I'll see you later. And I was like, wait, you're leaving again? Like, I thought we were spending my birthday together and I haven't even like seen you except for you chauffeuring me from place to place. And he was like, this is the last one I promise. Like, this is the last time I'm going to drop you off and run away and I'm like okay so um I was super excited because actually I had not had time to repaint my toenails before I went out for my birthday and I was wearing flip-flops so I was I was very excited to have the opportunity to get that done uh this place was super bougie uh they had like little like uh, bubbly champagnes in glasses and fruit plates with little teeny tiny forks um and so it was very nice. And on the side of my uh, my Dunkin' Donuts cup, he had written happy birthday. So now, of course, everybody can read it. And everybody's like, oh, it's your birthday. It's so nice. Happy birthday. And I was like, oh, my Lord, have mercy. I do not like being the center of attention. But he's done this to me now. Um, but then, of course, I got the opportunity to kind of brag about him a little bit because I was like, yeah, we're on this little, like, adventure. And this is my second stop. And so then everybody wanted to date Eric. And I had to inform them all that he was unavailable for dating. Um, so I get that done. I get my nails done, get my toes done. And then um, we get back in the truck and he was like, so we, um, we're not going to get to the next place for about a half an hour, but your sister is working down the street, which she was. He was like, do you want to stop by and see her? Um, and I was like, yeah, we can. So we stopped into her work real quick so I could visit with her. Um, super, super quick. Actually worked out really well for me because before they painted my nails, I forgot to go. Usually, like I will get up, go to the bathroom, you know, that whole deal. So to make sure when my nails are wet, I don't have to go. And I did not do that beforehand. So that was my bad. Um, and then so from there, we're back into the car and on our way. So we're clearly going to downtown Cleveland. Um, and I'm not typically a downtown person. I just don't, there's not really anything down there I'm interested in. And he was like, I know you're not a downtown person, but just have a little bit of faith, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So we're driving around, we cannot find whatever destination number three is. Um, and then finally he pulls around the other way and he was like, okay, so we'll, what we did was we were staying at the Crown Plaza, which is right next to the world's largest outdoor chandelier. It's beautiful. Um, so he's rented a room for us to just kind of get away for a night and go to dinner and all of this stuff. And it was wonderful. Um, I was totally surprised. And so we went up to the room, um, got ready for dinner. And then I discover in my haste of packing that um, I have forgotten a single brush. I'm not kidding, guys. I didn't have a brush. Like nothing to, like my hair's naturally curly. Nothing to pick my hair out, nothing to comb it, nothing to, I have no, I have no utensils. Well, I'm sitting here thinking like I'm going to be aerial. I'm going to get me a fork and I'm going to make do, which I didn't have to do. I finger comb, I combed it with my fingers after I got out of the shower. Um, and then when I blow dried it, I did the same thing with the finger combing. And then um, I was thankfully had a curling iron. So I was able to fake it. Um, but yeah, no, I just went out there with no, br <laughs> no brush whatsoever. Um, so then after that, we went to dinner which is wonderful. He picked this little Italian place. It was so super cute. Um, and then from there, we walked up the street to this, um, like, cupcakery. 
uh, and that's open until like two o'clock in the morning. So that must be a thing in like downtown Cleveland. Um, and so we went in there, we got cupcakes, um, which was wonderful. I got, what did I get? I think I got the cookies and cream. Eric got the red velvet and cream cheese frosting, um, and a coffee, which made my heart happy. So then he's like, do you want to walk down and see the chandelier? And I'm like, yeah, that's fine. So on our way to seeing the chandelier, um, there's all of these people that are like, there's like this big, I don't even know how to explain it. It's like this big sign, um, but it looks like a disco ball and like all the lights are flashing. And then there's all of these people, um, like in, on this patio that all have like neon cult like they're black headphones but they have like neon lights on them and they're all dancing around and singing but there's no music there's no music and I'm like what alien invasion is happening here like what is going on and Eric's like it's a silent disco and I'm like what what is a silent disco and he was like oh yeah they're like they're huge and they've been doing this all summer long I'm like what are you what I'm like so they're all listening to the same song and he was like, well, they're all, you know, listening to music or whatever and dancing with each other, but nobody else can hear the music. I'm like, this is wild. So uh, he's like, I don't, he's like, can we get around them? And I was like, yes, like there, I can see a way. So I'm walking through and I realize the way that I see is actually the stage. So we cannot get through them. We have to walk, I mean, like directly in between this disco thing to get to the other side on the chandelier which we do. Then there's a very nice man there with a very fancy camera who is taking pictures of the chandelier. We asked him if he would please take a picture of us with the chandelier in the background. So we do that. And then um, we're heading back toward the hotel, toward this silent, um, silent disco. And he's like, can we just go around them? And I was like, I'm a little bit curious. I got to be honest. Like, I'm a little bit curious about the silent disco. So I'm standing on the edge of it looking and this, <laughs> this woman comes up to me and she goes, are you Kelly Latavola? And I'm like, what? Huh? Yes. And she was like, I knew it was you when you were walking through the crowd the first time. I, I like when I saw you, I knew it was you. And I was like, um, and she's like, I'm the one who sent you a message on Instagram last night about what color or where to get your nails done. So it turns out she was a, like a U YouTube fan. Um, this is the first time ever in my life <laughs> I've been quote unquote spotted in public and uh, I was super uncomfortable with the attention. She was very nice. She was totally lovely. Um, so apparently her husband worked for the news and he had been covering the silent disco. And so she was explaining to me that you, so you put the headphones on and then you have three choices of stations. Like they change the station on the headphones and you can listen to, you know, whichever. So I guess the night we were there, which was the last one of the, of the season, which makes sense because my birthday's at the end of August, um, is was prom night. That was the theme, prom night. So when you clicked the station, like one was like 80s, one was um, like today's hits, one was um, like 2000s or something. So you could pick the, the song you wanted to listen to. So all of these people listening to the headphones, dancing around, aren't even in fact listening to the same song. Like you could have someone listening to like Girls Just Want to Have Fun by Cindy Lauper and someone else listening to SOS by Rihanna and someone else listening to, you know, Ed Sheeran and Justin Bieber. Like, I mean, it's crazy. I get like, it's kind of a super cool idea. So anyway, she let me try on her headphones. Um, and so I could understand how it worked. And she was totally lovely and it was wonderful meeting her. It was just like crazy that somebody would recognize me in a crowd of people. But anyway, um, so Eric and I uh, made our way back to the room and he was teasing me and he was like, don't ever tell me. Cause like he'll always make like, you know, jokes about like, you know, internationally known, world famous, whatever. And I'm like, you're such a nigger. Nobody knows who I am. Like, I'm just this person on YouTube. And um, he was like, no, no, that's not true. And so then this totally fueled his fire, y'all. I mean, he just, he's like, don't ever tell me you're not this or you're not. I was like, I can't, I'm so mad it happened with you because I will never live this down. Um, 
So anyway, we went back to the room, we hung out. He graciously did not give me a hard time about typing up a blog post for the card that I had forgot earlier in the day. Um, he was super good about that. And um, so then we hung out and we did not get to eating our cupcakes though. So then the next day when we checked out um, and then came back, he did make arrangements. Uh, this was before we had Emma, we had Molly. He made arrangements for my sister um, to watch Molly while we were away, which was wonderful. So um, when we came back home, we ended up eating the cupcakes after dinner that night uh, because both of us were just not, it, you know, wasn't happening after the first huge meal of, well, not the first, but dinner that night. So it was a wonderful birthday. I was totally surprised. I didn't see any of it coming. The guys at work were teasing him that he's ruined. Um, he set the bar too high now. They're like, you've, you've ruined her birthdays. Oh, and he did make my card again. Yes, he did. So he made my birthday card again and wrote me super sweet notes. And, um, it was, it was totally awesome. Like for him to spend the time, um, you know, just making the day all about me, which I mean is rare. Like, come on, I'm, I work three jobs. I'm a mom. Um, you know, it's all of us. So when somebody takes the time to make it all about you without you having to ask, without you having to say, you know, I need this, I need a break. I need to take care of myself for them just, um, to be able to, to know and, and give you this gift. Like I'm just so grateful. It was such a wonderful day. Um, so anywho, that was my, that was my birthday story. And he did, I was able to go back and look after, um, after we went back to the room that night, he did let me go back through Instagram and see how he had been updating everybody, uh, along the way. Uh, <laughs> so I'm glad that it's kind of fun. You know, you guys got to be a part of it and, um, you know, and he, he made it more, you know, I don't know, I guess you, I don't want to say user friendly, but he did, um, you know, I, I guess I'll let, uh, you know, a lot of people into our world for a little bit. Like I share things on Instagram, but it was funny, um, to, I guess, see what his take was on it or how he would share things. Um, but yeah, so wonderful day was super, super grateful. Um, we did eventually go that following Friday, uh, which was the day before my dad's birthday. Um, we did have a, a family party, which was also super nice. Um, my mom typically buys me clothes, for my birthday, but I don't have any room in this house for any more clothes. That's the reality of it. There's no storage here. And um, so I asked for non-clothes things. So I actually got uh, personalized shampoo, which I've kind of been intrigued about for a while. Um, ooh, back to the card here. So all the Copa coloring is done. I've outlined it, done all of those things. And typically I don't show you this part where I'm making the actual card base. Um, but because I wanted to do the inside of the card, um, that's why I'm showing this part. So I'm going to stamp the little goat in here and then mask him, do some ink blending. And this is going to be like the punchline. Uh, so the front of the card will say, I haven't stamped that banner yet. You'll see in a minute. Um, we'll say herd, H-E-R-D. Isn't that punny? It's so cute. Uh, herd, it's your birthday, you old goat. And my dad did laugh, by the way. He totally laughed when he opened it. Um, but so I got this function of beauty, um, like hair thing, which I am excited about. I've been trying it for the last um, couple of weeks and we'll see if there's any results there. Uh, and then I also um, got a sketch box, uh, which is like a art subscription that you can get and they'll send you art supplies and it's like once a month. Uh, we didn't sign up for the monthly. We just signed up for one because I kind of wanted to check it out and see. Um, you know, if that's something that I would be interested in, but that way it wasn't, um, you know, it just wasn't clothes and things that I wouldn't necessarily use. Um, my sisters, um, got me, well, ever I think everybody got me a Dunkin' Donuts gift card, quite honestly. Um, and then my sister Michelle got me two books. They got, she got me the mermaid chair and a man called Ove. So the mermaid chair I already read, um, which I did enjoy. I don't know that I was head over heels in love with it, but it was, it was an okay book. Um, I have not read the other one yet. Then, um, my sister got me a, my other sister Kim got me, um, a gift card to Barnes and Noble and a Dunkin' Donuts gift card. Um, so I'm, so I'm set on the reading. Um, speaking of books, uh, Eric just bought me the new Stephen King book, which called The Institute. Uh, and it was amazing. 
So if you are a King fan, it's definitely more sci-fi than horror. Do it. Get it. Buy it. Read it. It's so good. I so loved it. I read it. It's a very long book. It's like a true King novel and I read it in less than a week. Um, so anyway, now I'm going to glue my panel onto my card base here and then I'm going to pop up my little banner um, and then that's it. That's the whole scene card here. Like I said, I don't usually make cards for my dad or masculine cards, um, but I just thought this was super cute and it was from me and Nathan. So, uh, you know, it made sense with the little farmer. Um, and I also don't typically decorate the inside of my cards. So this was all kinds of different for me. But um, yeah, so I hope that you learned some kind of tips and tricks about the scenes, about a little bit about perspective, ways to, you know, combine those things. And that's it. So thank you guys so much for joining me and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.